in Washington, D.C. Some people say it's a dirty word. My guest on KSAT Q&A today is not one of those. Will Hurd is a former U.S. representative for District 23, of course, former CIA officer, cybersecurity executive, author of the book American Reboot. You can read about him at willbeheard.com, but a lot of people, of course, are very familiar with you. Congressman, thank you for joining us. I want to talk off the top about this idea of bipartisanship. Sure. Uh, we just saw, you know, a heated debate just among Republicans to, to pick a new Speaker of the House. Is it possible to be bipartisan? It absolutely is possible, and that's what actually what the country wants. If you look at the results of the midterm elections in, in November in 2022, uh, the message was, hey, we want serious people solving serious problems. There's always this debate in politics that ticket splitters don't exist. People that vote from one party for something like governor and a different party for, let's say, a, 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 a U.S. House representative member. Um, there's a lot of those showed up uh, in this past election. And if, if both parties recognize and, and a answer a simple question, what do we want America to be? And nobody in America is going to say, we want America to be a place that breaks down into red enclaves and blue enclaves. It's a place that we want um, where anybody, if they set their mind to it, can become whoever they want to be. That's the America we want. And if you focus on that, then you're going to realize the only way to do it is together. Are we at the point where border solutions, where you think there is a bipartisan border solution out there? Because to me, it seems to break down with whoever the president is yeah. gets blamed for problems at the border. But there aren't a lot of solutions mm -hmm. on what should happen at the border. So, so the reality is you can get 240 votes in the House, you can get 60 votes in the Senate, but what prevents a solution from actually coming to the floor for a vote are leadership of both parties, because both parties would rather use this issue as a political bludgeon than to, to solve the problem. And that's, that's really unfortunate. And I know this exists because when I was in Congress, I worked with the guy, Pete Aguilar, a Democrat from California, on a piece of legislation that addressed DACA, that addressed the root causes in other places, that talked about putting technology along the border and fixing this really broken uh, legal system that is, is backed up with millions of people. So the, so, the, 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 so the actual solutions are not hard, but getting leadership willing to, to um, on, on Republican and Democrats to not be afraid of their fringe and solve a real problem, it's possible. Um, whether the political will is there to do that right now, um, that's the real question. I don't think it is. I was going to say, are we getting closer, though? I don't think we are. L let's take something as simple as streamlining legal immigration. Right. Um, one of the things that President Biden is talking about is if you apply for asylum in your own home country, we're going to streamline the process. That could get done for, for, worker v for, for, for the, the guest worker program. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, there are some on the far left that don't want to see that kind of thing f from, from happening. Uh, there are people on the, on the, the, the left that want to see uh, more technology be placed along the board. Order, but there are too many Republicans that don't want to work with Democrats and seen as if they're soft on this issue. So it's unfortunate. It just seems like we're spending so much money on the border with military solutions mm -hmm. and, like you said, technology solutions when things could be made easier that maybe is at least part of the solution, if not the solution. Look, how you name the industry, it's right here in San Antonio. How long do you have to wait in line for certain things? It's because yeah. there's a lot of companies and a lot of industries that still need workers. And, and even though we're at this tough time with inflation and potentially going to a recession, there's still a lot of industries that need workers. So let's streamline legal immigration. And, and unfortunately, the other problem that people have is not understanding what asylum is. There are literally folks on the on the, on the far left that believe that anybody should be able to come to the United States. And that's not what asylum is. And, and, just be, and, and it's not humane to give an excuse for human smugglers to take the money and, and life savings of people to go on this perilous journey. It's hard to get from, from Guatemala City to Eagle Pass, right? And that's not humane by allowing that environment for those kinds of things to happen. And so it's an unfortunate situation. And as you know, and y'all follow, our communities along the border have been dealing with this, not just in this administration, but the last administration, and they are pushed to the extreme, and they can't b bear the brunt of this problem, of this crisis, um, much longer. All right, I want to talk quickly and lean on your uh, CIA expertise. Mm -hmm. When we talk about classified documents, obviously there are some major differences between 
the documents that President Trump had and the mm -hmm. documents that President Biden has. But when we talk about classified documents, how concerned are you as a former CIA agent that these classified documents are leaving places they should not be leaving? Well, that, that's what I thought. How it's the mentality and the mindset that it's okay to move these things and it's okay to have access to them when you're when you're no longer in government had i taken documents when i was in the cia and if they were in my garage in san antonio or if i had them in a hotel uh, somewhere when i'm traveling guess what we wouldn't be talking here because i'd be thrown i'd be thrown in jail and this is one of those issues where um, folks were criticizing those that, that were criticizing donald trump for doing this should also uh, criticize president biden and those that are now criticizing president biden and weren't criticizing president trump uh, that lack of ideological consistency is what ultimately frustrates a, a, a lot of a lot of voters and a lot of people in the country. This is a serious problem. We should be protecting the secrets of our country. We should not be having them in your office or your hotel room, period, full stop. And I think this is a broader issue that DOJ, Department of Justice, should look into is how is this happening under two different times, under two different administrations, um, and it's a problem. I want to talk about cybersecurity quickly. How concerned are you still about cybersecurity? It's kind of been pushed to the back with all these other issues we've seen recently. Two years ago, $4.5 billion was stolen in cybercrime. Two years from now, that number is going to be north of $10 trillion. That's what the T. The, the, the more that we're, our society is being interconnected, the more that our digital lives are, are becoming um, as important as our, our physical lives, um, the surface area of attack is increasing. But here is still the good thing. If you do some of the basics, have a strong password. Patch your software, make sure your software on your computer and your phone's up to date, and make sure you're backing up your information, and then you can be, be okay. And also, don't click on things, on emails or texts from people you don't know. If you didn't buy that thing at Kohl's, guess what, it's probably a phishing, it's yeah. probably a phishing exercise. Don't hit the link. Don't hit the link. What's next for Wilbur Will Heard? Well, look, I'm, I'm heard, which yeah. is your your website will be heard. .com. Absolutely. Look, I, I'm enjoying my, my role now working with technology companies. I'm on the board of OpenAI. Everybody's talking about chat GPT uh, being involved in, in how these technology works. But uh, the question becomes, is my political career over? Probably not. And I have to evaluate the other ways for me to help my country. Send it a possibility. Uh, every, everything's possible. Run for um, president. Every, everything is possible. And if I can serve, and, and like, I'm excited. I've, I've had the opportunity to serve my country in a different ways. And if I can do it again, then I'll evaluate it. I've truly appreciated our conversations over the years. And uh, hopefully this isn't the last one. <laughs> I'm sure it won't be. All right, Will. Thanks for your time. And of by course. the way, congratulations. You I, just got married. New Year's Eve. I, yeah. I appreciate KSAP being part of your honeymoon tour here. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Three-time Congressman Will Hurd, graduate of Marshall High School here in San Ramo. Antonio as well, and mm -hmm. A&M. Appreciate your time. Thanks, buddy. We'll be right back. With that launch delayed, the three will probably have to stay in space until September. Take a live look outside right now with live cam, 58 degrees out there. And all right, so there's gonna be a lot of people heading to the game tomorrow. What kind of weather can they expect me at? It's going to be really pleasant out there, if I'm being honest. Winds are not going to be as gusty as what we saw earlier today. Mountain cedar probably still going to be high heading into tomorrow, but we're going to find plenty of sunshine, low humidity, so it's going to feel comfortable stepping outside. Temperatures are headed for the mid-60s tomorrow afternoon, and then after the game tomorrow, likely will be a little chilly in the low 50s and upper 40s after about 9 to 10 p.m. So we've got a few chilly mornings in store here over the next couple of days. Starting off Friday and Saturday in the 30s here in town. Somewhat seasonable high temperatures, though, and more sunshine. Very limited rain chances again, and the first one doesn't really come until the middle of next week. We'll have another full look at what we're expecting over the next several days in a few. You know, for me personally, 60s, 70s in January are just fine. For people like Adam Kasky, it's not cold enough, so he is actually ice fishing over the next few days. He's been so excited about it this week too. Every time that I just come into work, so you know where I'm going to be at the end of the week? I know, I know. Ice fishing? He, yeah, I, I, he's going to be on the hard water. On the hard water. Said, that that's is, what he meant with, you know, frozen 
lake yes, and all that. Yes, that is the exact phrase that he uses. Yes, uh, it's going to be chilly over the next couple mornings here in San Antonio, but not near as cold as where Adam Gasky is over the next couple of days. Let's quickly once again take a look at the pollen count, though, because yes, we had that cool front move through last night. Those gusty north winds kicked on. Yes, it is mountain cedar season, but a lot of times whenever we see these fronts move through, they allow those winds to shift in from the north. All of those trees in the hill country that pollinate late in the year, those winds didn't allow that pollen to filter into south central Texas. So that is why mountain cedar is high yet again today. Molds are in the pollen count too. They're in the moderate category, so it could be better, but could be worse. And again, we'll likely see elevated mountain cedar counts heading into our Friday as well. Over the past 30 minutes, though, winds still calming down. These wind gusts looking a little less intense out there here as we approach the 7 p.m. hour. That will continue to be the case as we head into the overnight hours tonight and waking up Friday morning. Still with those winds in place, what that also has done is allowed that cooler and drier air to move back into South Central Texas. Dew points in the upper 20s, so it feels comfortable when you do step outside. Temperature sitting at 60 degrees this hour officially over at the airport. Overall temperatures right now compared to where we were this time yesterday, about 10 to even 20 degrees cooler. So those afternoon highs today were closer to the seasonal average for this time of year, and that's going to be the case yet again as we head into our Friday. 58 in Bolverde this hour at 60 in New Braunfels. 58 in Seguin, 57 in Bandera, and 55 over in the Lost Maples area. Because we are expecting clear skies through the overnights, those winds will continue to subside. And just the dry air in place, when you combine all three of those ingredients together, that allows those temperatures to tumble through the overnight hour. So wake up time tomorrow morning. You will want to bundle up, stepping out for the morning drive, stepping out for the drive to school. Mid to upper 30s expected here in Bear County around 38 officially here in town. Low 30s possible in spots across portions of the hill country. It's not out of the question that a few spots briefly hit 32 degrees, but again, that should be pretty brief because after we see the sun come up tomorrow, plenty of it will be found throughout the day, helping those temperatures climb 52 by 10 a.m. around 60 into the lunchtime hour, 63 by 2 p.m. here in San Antonio. We've got a forecast high pointed around 65, so very comfortable, especially with those lower dew points and low humidity values in the works. Into Saturday, more of the same. It will be another cold start around 37 is that forecast morning low here in town. And then mostly sunny skies helping temperatures climb into the mid to upper 60s by Saturday afternoon. Sunday, though, is when we start to see some additional changes work back in. Dew points will start to rise. Winds flip back in from the south. That's going to help those temperatures warm. Still chilly out there Sunday morning. We're in the upper 40s, but daytime highs are now warmer than average. Again, mid 70s. How about upper 70s near 80 Monday into Tuesday? And then Wednesday is when that next front tries to move in that we were talking about earlier. Rain chances unfortunately are not great, at least not as good as we would like them to be, but a few isolated showers certainly possible. Steve, better chances just farther east of San Antonio. Boy, do we need the rain. Yes, we do. All right. Thank you, Mia. Well, what is an exoplanet? We'll explain exoplanets when we come back. Into the buzz and in its short time on the job, the James Webb Telescope has made several exciting observations. Add this to the list. NASA says the agency says this is an illustration of LHS 47B, an exoplanet that the Webb Space Telescope for the first time confirmed exists. An exoplanet, just a planet that sits outside our solar system. The rocky world, almost the same size as Earth, but a few hundred degrees warmer. It orb orbits around a red dwarf host star taking about two Earth days to complete that trip. NASA says Webb discovered that planet is closer to its star than Earth is to the sun. But its star is less than half the temperature of our sun, and that means it's possible 
this exoplanet could still have an atmosphere to explore. Let's explore that idea. NASA scientists didn't need the Webb telescope to find this potentially habitable for life planet. This is an illustration of an exoplanet the space agency is calling TOI 700E. A NASA mission spotted the Earth-sized planet about 100 light years away. They say it is the fourth planet orbiting a small star's habitable zone. That's the zone where a planet is at a safe enough distance from a star that it can potentially have liquid water on its surface. Now, according to scientists, the potential for water also suggests the potential for life on that planet. Researchers say this system is one of the few with multiple small habitable zone planets that they have now confirmed exists. All right, from planet extinction to some extinction right now. Take a look at that. That is a tooth from a shark. An ancient shark fossil hunting paying off in a big way for a little girl in Maryland with the discovery of a massive prehistoric shark tooth. Molly Sampson discovered the megalodon tooth in the water at Calvert Cliffs State Park. The 15 million year old tooth five inches long. As you can see it's the size of Molly's hand. Experts say it likely belonged to a shark nearly 50 feet long, almost the size of a semi truck trailer. Molly wants to be a paleontologist and knows all about the megalodon sharks, which became extinct millions of years ago. She says she will add the priceless find to her collection of more than 400 shark teeth. That's a mouthful of a collection. We'll be right back. I'll see you tonight on the night beat at 10 and also tomorrow starting at four. We're going to do a live stream live from the dome and then I'm anchoring the shows at five and six from the Alamo Dome for the big Spurs game. We'll see you on the night beat at 10.